Hi guys, Lewis here and in this video I'm going to give you a quick rundown of Mailshake. This is an email outreach tool that I've been using for a few weeks now. I've recently switched from GMAS. I'm really liking it and it's great for building white hat links at scale. Now before we move forward, I want to clarify what this tool is. Because it's not a CRM or customer relationship management tool like Buzzstream or Ninja Outreach, it doesn't find prospects or contact information. It's just for email outreach. So you feed it the right information and it will go out and generate links for you almost on autopilot. So I'm gonna log in now and I mean you can see already that unlike GMAS, this has a dedicated user interface. Now it still uses your Gmail account, you connect it up beforehand, but you run your campaigns from this interface. The interface itself is very simple, very lean, and most importantly, super easy to use. Now this is the dashboard. I've got a feed for all my campaigns here. I can start a new campaign or use the navigation on the side to jump to the different areas. And really that's all you get when you first log into this tool. Now let's start with the obvious, which is Mail Merge, a feature that allowed you to pull information from a central database. Now Mailshake uses CSV files, which you can create in any spreadsheet software. So I'm gonna switch over to Google Sheets now. And I've got my dummy prospects in here, Tom, Dick, and Harry. And you can have as many rows and as many columns as you want, which is potentially thousands of different prospects. Now Mailshake pulls information for each prospect and the first step to get that to happen is to save it as a CSV and like I said before you can use any spreadsheet software I'm just using Google Sheets for this which does allow you to save as a CSV so just go to file download as and CSV. So this is a bit different to how GMAS works which does read the live Google Sheet in this case, you do have to download the CSV. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a big issue in my opinion. It's literally a few seconds of extra work. So I'm back in Mailshake and I'm gonna start a new campaign and I'm gonna take you through the steps. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is call it Mailshake Demo and click Next. Now I just need to upload the CSV that I saved earlier and you can drop it in here or you can click to bring up your files. Mine's here. Now you just need to map your columns for email and name. Now Mailshake will normally pick this up as long as you've named them appropriately. Click Next finish import and it does take a few seconds. Now you just need to write your outreach email or you can click to bring up templates over here. And these templates are actually quite good. I recommend changing them up a bit because you're not gonna be the only person using them. Alternatively, you can use your own saved ones and I've created a few here. For this demo, I'm gonna use the Mailshake demo template and use this template. Now you just wanna add your text replacements if they're not already part of the template. So you can go over here, pull the drop down, and I wanna include name and I wanna include URL. Now, if I scroll down, I can create another email or multiple emails to go out if they don't open or reply. Now, drip means it will go out regardless and click if they click on a link within your email. So let's add a follow-up. Again, I'll use a template. I already have one saved for this. So Mailshake demo follow-up. This does have the text replacements already included. I'll click next. And here you can preview each email for each individual prospect. You can click the arrows here to circle through and you can make independent changes. So if some people need more attention, you can do that here, and you can even change the follow-ups as well. So that can come in very handy, especially for big players in your niche who need a bit of extra ego stroking. So like I said, that can be really useful depending on the type of campaign that you're running. I'm gonna click Next again. You'll want to enable these to make sure your campaign is being tracked. You can schedule the send if you want, and you can click this to show advanced options. You can change the time zone, send in batches, which is really good if you're warming up a brand new Gmail account, and you can set up fallback te text replacements. So let's say, for example, some of my prospects don't have a name in the, in the CSV file. I can say any prospects that are missing the name value, just replace that with the word there. So it would say, hey there, instead of hey name. You'll also need to check this box to obey the laws and click next. Now you can send this campaign right away or you can save a campaign for later, which we'll do now. And that's all there is to it. It is a bit more involved than GMAS, but it's a lot more intuitive and user-friendly and I actually quite prefer it. So let me take you through the campaigns tab. So I'll click over here. I've actually got three campaigns here, including the one we just made, which is paused. And I can pause and resume any of these just by clicking this icon. And I can also go into any of them. So I'll go into my skyscraper campaign by clicking on it. I get my campaign stats, which is why it's important to enable tracking. I get a campaign specific feed and I get some more reporting down here. Visually, the reporting is just miles ahead of GMAS and you'll know what I mean if you've ever used GMAS. 
So let's look at the messages tab up here, which shows me all the emails I have set up for this campaign and I can click edit messages and make any number of changes, including add or remove some emails in this campaign. Now obviously that won't apply to emails that have already been sent, but it's good if you're sending in batches or if you add more recipients to the campaign. And that brings me to the recipients tab where I can see all my prospects or drop new ones right in here by clicking add new recipients. And when you do that, all the settings for this campaign will apply to your new prospects. So you can literally create campaigns for different outreach strategies like guest posting or skyscraper, and you can keep topping them up with new prospects. And the text replacements will really take care of the rest. So hopefully you can see how useful this feature is. Now let's go to the settings tab. There's not much going on here. You can uh, change your sending name and email address, uh, but that's all that's going on in the settings tab at the moment. Let's look at the other option. So in the mail accounts option, you can add extra Gmail accounts. And in the teams option, you can add new members. That's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna get into that. But I will show you the unsubscribe option here. Essentially, any email in this list will not receive emails from you. It does work globally across all campaigns. And from what I can tell, Mailshake also adds bounced emails automatically. And anyone who replies with the words opt out or unsubscribe will also be automatically added to this list. And of course, you can add emails manually to avoid reaching out to the same people across different campaigns. I actually prefer how GMAS does this, which uses suppress lists. It's a bit faster, uh, but this works just as well. Now, before I wrap this up, I, I wanna talk about uh, deliverability because I spoke about this in my GMAS video, but deliverability is just the percentage of emails that make it to your prospect's inbox. Now, there are a lot of factors at play when it comes to deliverability, but there is one in particular, which is the tracking domain, and that's used, obviously, to track your campaigns. That's how you get your statistics and reporting. And Mailshake uses a default tracking domain for everyone, and that means that if that domain builds up a bad sending reputation, it will affect everyone using this tool. Now, at the moment, you can't set a custom tracking domain like you can with GMAS, but Mailshake claims so far they haven't seen any effect on deliverability by using a default tracking domain. Personally, I haven't seen any issues. I haven't used it extensively, but from my limited experience with this tool, it's been fine. I'm gonna let you make up your own mind on that one. But really, that's pretty much it. Uh, the email support is really good. The price is excellent at $9 per month per user. It doesn't have a free plan like GMAS does, but it's still a very affordable option. And I've personally, like I said, switched over from GMAS. It's not gonna be everyone's favorite, but I'm really, really happy with it so far. So I hope this was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.